Hello everyone and welcome to another video. What I have on the bench today is my, and I'm pretty excited with it, my Dialectic uh, Gamma um, ZX Spectrum clone from Czechoslovakia back in the uh, late 80s. It was uh, produced, um, I can see uh, there is some kind of signal or ghost signal on the TV as I was trying to uh, initially test if this machine is working, apparently it does but uh, trying to get the RF um, output right there from two uh, RF outputs you can find uh, uh, on the back of the machine is the one on the left gives us the RF signal to the TV and the other one on the right gives us a um, monitor out uh, composite signal. Here is the brick, the big uh, brick to feed the power uh, that the computer needs. We can see a couple of LED indicators. One is for bank switching indicating uh, which bank is working uh, after um, all and the green one is on. There is a, a well placed um, reset button so you cannot accidentally hit it and I was I found this part like the RF from an RF cable uh, in my spares but I don't think uh, I can uh, put it in there to, to make a conversion and get a, a new cable uh, so I can build one get rid of the RF um, cable and uh, use the monitor instead the um, video uh, input on the back of my TV and I want to um, make a clear picture out of this um, so we can go over the technical details and the story behind the didactic gamma um, this is the other end I have to cut off I believe and put the uh, this other cable but this one doesn't look right so I have to construct one uh, build one from scratch using um, analog uh, TVRF uh, uh, jacks and um, hopefully we can have a picture um, yeah I, I need to get rid of the uh, RF um, cable and uh, get the best picture that we can out of the composite out so I think um, I'm gonna put this one aside it was inside the box and I'm gonna start uh, looking for parts to build uh, my own cable from scratch and this is what I end up with the classic RF uh, kind of antenna um, plug um, right there uh, right there on the uh, right side where the composite is a strange thing uh, with a didactic gamma is there are no markings let me flip it over so you can see two parallel the first one is the parallel interface the other one is a system bus there are no markings so you can tell that this is for example the uh, uh, power uh, socket which carries also the audio in and audio out that one on the uh, left now is the composite and the other one on the right is the antenna uh, uh, vi uh, video uh, TV the modulator out um, there are no markings so you cannot spot or you cannot tell immediately which one is which uh, but apart from that uh, I'm grabbing now the other end which is on the back of the TV uh, which is the uh, RCA kind of um, old uh, cable like this one uh, if you compare it this to the uh, this one is a cable from ZX Spectrum which goes on into the computer this one instead will be used at the back of the TV and uh, the other end which is the classic uh, RF antenna plug will be used on the side of the computer so let me uh, put it uh, there and conduct the first uh, test and hopefully you can get a, a great image um, trying to reach the AV3 at the back of the TV sorry for that and uh, I guess we made it we have a great picture after all um, I'm trying now to uh, test some keys at least the numeric uh, part uh, of the keyboard 
actually looks okay and later on um, I will check the rest of the keys, the enter is working the colors are changing according to the numbers and everything looks fine the uh, didactic gamma keyboard is a uh, uh, nice one uh, nothing to do with the rubber keys of the spectrum or anything and um, so far it looks nice this symbol shift works and everything now the didactic gamma was the first one of the didactic uh, series to be a ZX Spectrum clone the system has 80 uh, kilobytes of RAM divided into 2 by 32k each and uses 16 kilobytes of RAM uh, for a video it has uh, 16 kilobytes of uh, ROM and uh, since this guy comes from 1989 uh, is the third uh, wave uh, in production which uh, actually manages to overcome some uh, mishaps over the original ZX Spectrum's uh, uh, ROM and um, we can say that it's not a hundred percent compatible again like the Didactic M uh, but it was the best uh, out of the three waves the um, first one came out in 1987 the next one uh, 1988 and this one uh, the third wave uh, came out in the markets back in uh, 1989 came out in the markets is not the completely right the right thing to say because it came out uh, mostly to be used uh, at schools back in uh, the day in Czechoslovakia focusing now on this uh, interesting uh, 5D connector here which actually is a single point to uh, talk to the tape recorder for loading saving but also to the um, power supply at the same time all in one connector so I guess I have to uh, look for the pinout and start building another cable uh, this time to uh, get the signals for the recorder so I got another picture uh, thanks Daniel for uh, bringing this uh, link up uh, so you can see all the uh, signals coming from a single uh, source and I'm gonna follow this diagram but of course I need to put everything on paper so we're looking at the female side the way it was depicted the way it can be found on the back of the computer so female 5D and the signals uh, that are coming along uh, we're going to skip the 10 ohm resistors and uh, what we need to do actually is to go ahead and connect the cables already half made on this female uh, socket the other way around which means whatever is depicted on the left is going to be soldered on the right and whatever is depicted on the right side is going to be soldered already soldered on the left side just because in the meantime uh, what we have to do is have to go through the computer to this extension cable uh, go ahead and uh, connect the 5D male connector uh, just to get the signals right and so I have already uh, marked the colors of each and every cable and I have prepared a couple of uh, mono jacks to be connected uh, for uh, saving and loading operation so the next thing to do for me now is to connect them loosely uh, in the beginning and test them now for the purpose of this initial test as I said I'm going to loosely connect like this uh, the ear uh, jack the black one is common ground and the orange one is going uh, into the ear socket of the tape recorder and what is left to do is to connect the yellow um, one sharing again the black common ground um, and uh, connect it to a microphone the mic uh, in, in, uh, input and uh, then I can put some electric tape around it and make it uh, look nice but for now I'm very pleased because uh, it works and we have already managed to start loading a game and <laughs> first try and I'm happy about it it looks okay 
uh, I'm going to uh, do this uh, with another game um, since this one apparently looks okay I need to uh, check again over another tape just because the volume is not uh, the same onto the media, the cassettes um, and this one is an actual copy I'm going to try to do the same experiment with um, an original Sinclair tape and then I can call it a wrap so loosely connected the orange as it comes from um, audio in sharing common ground with a black one and uh, feed the, the sound uh, into the computer from the ear socket uh, this one is left to get connected uh, onto the yellow one which is going to be the save functionality and the uh, blue one I think it's 5 volts sharing again black common ground and the brown one is 12 volts sharing again um, the black common ground and what I have to do is I have to find um, a couple of female uh, mono jacks uh, to have some spare um, current for whatever reason um, uh, over this cable uh, so uh, yeah I'm happy we, we made the cable almost and uh, we managed to have a program uh, loaded again almost in a while <laughs> I believe it will be fine um, so I'm happy with this um, I tried to use uh, 48 kilobytes requiring uh, programs to be loaded not the 16k programs that I have on tape uh, just because I want to uh, understand that uh, the memory uh, is working uh, fine and the computer is capable of uh, delivering all 48k uh, or almost to the user and as you can see now we managed to um, load the flight simulator from the original Sinclair tape what is also interesting about this machine is that you could find um, RAM chips coming from uh, uh, the USSR uh, back then Russia um, Bulgaria uh, Czech Republic um, and uh, even some Samsung RAM chips can be found in there depending on the variant um, again I have to rework the loose connections that I have here and put everything wrapped um, with electric tape and make it look better connect the uh, second mono jack as well over the yellow um, wire right there and make it look nice so I guess I'll be doing just that in a, in a while I'm happy with the results um, I'm gonna keep the cable inside the box for whatever uh, testing or playing around with it in the future uh, so yeah I will uh, fix the cable the best way that I can and I'll be back in a minute and this is what we used to say and call the final product I know it's not very pretty but uh, it works well and that's all I care about now um, here and mic in place and I'm gonna take advantage of the extra two wires right here to get an extra uh, power source uh, I need to put two female mono jacks here to get 5 volts on the side and 12 volts on the side for whatever purposes so I'm going I don't have any mono ja female jacks uh, around here at this point in time but I'll do this later so uh, the way they used to do it with a 5 Dean uh, connector back then it wasn't original it was something that uh, used to work on Tesla uh, tape recorders and uh, cassette players and it wasn't just Tesla it w there were many mentors that used to have 5 Dean sockets uh, on the side of the, their tape recorders but it wasn't universal uh, what we call universal these days is the uh, ear and plain ear mono jack and plain uh, mic mono jack so that's why we had to convert this cable in order to work another interesting point that I forgot to mention is of course that this uh, system used to be built uh, around um, the Z80 uh, Zilog processor and not some other kind of uh, Russian variant instead um, 
an another thing we should point out is that the uh, memory chips uh, need uh, 5 volts to work, not the way it was with the ZX Spectrum. And yet another interesting thing is that on the bottom left uh, side you can see the original Ferranti ULA and not some other kind of Russian uh, uh, built uh, clone of the ULA instead. So it was uh, nothing um, like the Didactic M. So uh, if you haven't seen the video for Didactic M you can follow the link down below. So that was all for today. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, I hope you found this interesting and um, give us a thumbs up and I'll be catching you soon with another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.